here at the BSH conference in Brighton, we had a great talk from Michele Gamini, who came up from southern Switzerland, to talk about managing the asymptomatic follicular lymphoma patients, and it was interesting. So he described with his Mediterranean character patients, the anxiety generated by a watch and wait program is clearly enormous for many of his patients. And I suspect one of the reasons they use much more monotherapy rituximab treating their low tumor bulk asymptomatic follicular lymphoma patients is exactly that. In fact, he had a slide which detailed the cost for managing asymptomatic follicular lymphoma. At one end of the spectrum, he had 40,000 euros for managing the rituximab, and the other end, he had 5,000 euros for paying your psychologist regularly to keep you in a uh, stable place with watch and wait. Now, uh, I presume he was using that as an illustrative example of ends of the spectrum. But it does emphasize the point that it's very difficult for some patients. I mean, what strategies do I use? I think it's important to stress, I find with the patients that this is a challenging time. I think the first two, four, six months even of transitioning from being in a state of fitness when you thought you were, you had nothing wrong with you, enjoying good quality of life, particularly for good performance status patients who are on mid minimal medications, they've had very little healthcare interaction, and then suddenly you know a haematologist or an oncologist, and that's a challenging transition. And I say to patients, it's something that just, it needs time to be worked through. A lot of patients find things like the CLL Support Association, the Lymphoma Association, find these uh, resources very helpful. We had a meeting, a CLL SA meeting in Cambridge uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we've had really good feedback from patients on a watch and wait program, able to discuss with other patients, look through the data, because if you are if your natural character is a problem solver, grasp issues, let's deal with them, it's very difficult to be told, actually, there is nothing in effect you can do. And many of these patients do like the concept of, say, vitamin D supplementation and green tea and all of the things which have uh, pros and cons, and I'm not advocating them on camera, uh, but there are things that people like to be able to do, and I could extend that to vaccination strategies and all these other things um, in terms of practical terms. But definitely the holistic care, the interacting with patient groups people find useful. There are some patients who find actual counselling is required to transition them through this period. And all I can say really is it, it's very individualised. I, I, I think the uh, clinician managing a, a, a patient set um, in one part of the country with one demographic will be quite different from uh, in other parts of the country. So it's very hard to generalise and I think that's it's one of the skills that we acquire, I hope, as consultant haematologists in how we manage our patients individually.